Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are doing great. So uh, let's get started. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in this field and uh, I have done various deployments. I have certain patents on my name and I have uh, working you know, as an architect in this cloud industry. So uh, let's get started, guys. So today we're going to talk about Azure for Data Engineer. What is Azure? So before we talk about Azure, let's understand about the building block foundation, the basic of it, which is cloud. What exactly is cloud? So why we need the cloud? Why it basically it was introduced? So let's say, guys, you have to share the files to uh, someone else. Like you want to sh share the file with, uh, let's say, you know, your neighbor or something. How you can share the files to him? So if you are not using the cloud, the internet, you basically can use a wired connection. You can have maybe the file shared via the LAN. You can have basically a need. Yeah, or, uh, you know, like a physical media through which you can share the files. So uh, that's again one of the way. However, that's not an efficient way because uh, it sounds easy. But like if, yeah, if I had to share the file with someone who is not located in that, uh, you know, city who is like even far in that specific city who is in a different country. And if you are going to send the, you know, that uh, external drive, pen drive, hard drive to him, it's going to take a while, right? So for that, the cloud was introduced. In the case of cloud, what you do is you basically share your data to someone else to a different party via the internet. So wherein you are going to have a dedicated virtual storage, which is going to be available, and underlying is going to be in a physical storage where you can store the data and anyone can access it. Now, what we did uh, when this thing was introduced, we got a very good response on the market. So what we realized that okay, that's a good thing that we can do basically with Azure. Now, uh, sorry, with cloud basically, and certain vendors came in the market. Even so many companies launched their own cloud service. Like Microsoft has a cloud service which is known as Azure that you're going to learn today. That's something we're going to talk about today. Amazon have their own cloud service that the name of that cloud service is AWS. Yeah, you know, but Google, Google will have their own cloud service, which is basically the GCP. So likewise, we have basically different kind of Azure services, you know, cloud services which are provided by different different cloud vendors. Azure is like, uh, you know, some people give preference to Azure because the reason is that in so many organizations, you know, they already have a license partnership with Microsoft because they are using uh, Windows system. So they are not going to buy the license one by one. So what they do is they generally take a uh, license in bulk. Sometimes they do a partnership. So when they are going to go with the cloud service, they are going to get sometimes a good discount at a good tier as compared to the other cloud vendors. So that's something it's, it's, you get basically benefit with the Azure. But that doesn't mean that other cloud services are not used in the market. Yes, uh, so many people use different different uh, you know cloud services as well. So what exactly is Azure? So Azure is basically a cloud platform service which is provided by the Microsoft. One of the other good benefit with the Azure is that uh, since this is uh, provided by Microsoft, so if we talk about you know Microsoft has variety of products, so it can be integrated very easily with uh, the variety of products that Microsoft offers. Like product, if you talk about you know product like your uh, if you talk if you're a developer you work on Visual Studio, uh, like Visual Studio Code or normal Visual Studio. If when you you type the C sharp application, it can be integrated directly uh, with that very easily. If you talk about database, so there are like so so many applications that you cannot count on the fingers. It can be integrated very. Easily. So what exactly is Azure? So Azure, like I said, it's a cloud service, easily which is being provided by the Microsoft to overcome the business challenges that you uh, get with the physical wire. So like a LAN and all uh, wherein you don't have to, you are not going to have a dependency on it. Um, the, one of the other uh, best benefit in the case of Azure is that it gives you the freedom to build, manage and deploy application easily. It's not like that you have to worry about the different, um, you know, uh, applications, like how you're going to deploy, how you're going to do. It basically gives you advantage. Your, all the application can be deployed and managed easily here. So that's one of the biggest benefit. So moving on, talking about the different Azure features, Azure provides you a variety of features. First is on-demand provisioning, which means that it's going to ask you like what you need, when you need and when to stop. So whenever you want to create an instance, create an application, you can without any kind of hassle. It's again depends on you, depend on your uh, requirement. You can just uh, spin up the resource, you can destroy the resource and you can work on it. Next is scalability in minutes, which basically means that if I want to scale up or scale down the resource, I can do it in just minutes only depending on my requirement. Let's say I build a virtual machine of a Windows Server 2019 and I allocated 2 GB of RAM and they don't realize, oh, that's very less. I want to increase the RAM. I want to increase it to 8 GB. You can. So you can scale up the resource, scale down the resource. Even one of the biggest advantage, you know, that's really another good feature I want to give Azure is that you can define the criteria. For example, you know, I developed an application which is hosted uh, on the internet, which is publicly accessible to the people over the internet. Now, uh, what exactly happening is at 2 a.m., you know, so many people are trying to access my website. Maybe for 2 to 4 a.m. Indian time, that's maybe, you know, let's say 
uh, afternoon for us and at that time people are heavily using my website at that time it's because i got a good response and every time when so many requests are hitting my cpu utilization is getting very high which is uh, bringing down my entire environment so what you can do is first way is that you can just increase the hard drive ram so if you're going to keep that hard drive ram up all the time you are going to be charged for it so let's say you are getting that high peak time just for two hours so it's not like that you have to increase the configuration for 24 hours you can just uh, define the criteria in the case of azure that uh, you know for from this to this time like 2 to 4 am for example or whatever the condition you want to give for example i want to give my cpu utilization if it's going to go more than 90 percent it should uh, double the resources and when it's less than 90 percent it should uh, you know have the resources so it's going to run automatically along with that you can configure the alerts and in as well there's no you know another party integration is required third party integration is required you can have a direct integration from your system from your azure platform to your own uh, on-premise application if you have and uh, you can just configure it for the alerting for example if anything is working uh, not working as expected in that case you are going to get the alerts on your phone if you have configured the uh, alerts via the cell phone if you have convert, uh, you know, if you have basically configured the alerts via the, you know, email, you're going to get those alerts via the email itself. The next one basically is a pay as you consume. So this is like a unit of electricity, whatever you consume, you have to pay for it. So it's not like that you have to pay uh, in bulk. If you don't know like what exactly you are paying for, what's the scope of it. So it's pay as you consume, whatever you consume, you basically pay for it only. So that's one, again, one of the other benefits. So the next one basically is the efficiency, uh, you know, efficiency of exports. So wherein if you are working on an application, you just have to focus on the application itself. You don't have to focus on the tools. You don't have to focus how that, uh, you know, that uh, technology or that application works. You just have to focus on your uh, application itself. Now, last one basically is a measurable. So each and everything in the case of Azure, whatever you do, it's measurable. You can keep an eye on it. You can see that like what exactly you consumed, how much you consumed. So all for each and everything, uh, you know, it, it's going to be measured. So it's a measured service which is going to be available for real time usage. So these are a couple of the Azure features. So I hope that you got a fair understanding what exactly is Azure and uh, what are different features of the Azure. So let's uh, dive in more detail and understand about what exactly is the DA. So and before we understand what exactly is uh, DA, let's talk about it a little bit. So data analytics basically refers to the technique to analyze your data so that your productivity can be enhanced and the business basically can grow. So it's a concatenation of two things. The first thing is your business administration and exploratory data analysis where you're going to explore your data so that it can eventually increase your business. Now, why you need data analytics uh, as mentioned here so that, uh, so, you know, your data is basically the crude oil. It's a crude oil raw thing from which your companies can go up and down. I mean, company can go up if you are managing it very easily a company can go down if you're not managing it you are compromising it basically people can get the uh, you know like inside of your data with the help of data analytics what are the hidden components you can easily generate the report you can have the automation certain thing it can basically help you to increase your business so what exactly is cloud analytics so cloud analytics basically is a service which is going to run data analysts and the business intelligence operation in public or private cloud so cloud analytics company basically helps you to provide uh, scale up your business very easily and quickly now uh, what are the different type of cloud analytics it's public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud public cloud basically is a cloud which is basically accessible uh, you know on the public world where the people can have their own storage space but it's going to be a shared infrastructure like shared uh, space you're going to host something that's going to be available private cloud basically it's a cloud which is accessible only to one company and basically it acts as an extension of the company's IT infrastructure. Hybrid cloud basically is a mix of public and private cloud wherein you are going to have benefit of your private cloud on the public network. So it's, you are going to get a feeling that you are on a private cloud. However, you're going to be in a public network with the security of the public one. Now, what are the benefit of cloud analytics? Flexibility, that's the first one, which means that you can uh, increase or decrease the resources. You can basically, uh, you are, let's say you want to move to a different subscription, your company is getting acquired. Uh, in that case, your company is moving to a different uh, organization network. You can just move uh, move to a different organization, different network, different components. So that's one of the major advantage that you get flexibility. Next one that you have is a scalability and agility. Like I said, you can scale up and scale down the resources. It's not like that. Uh, once you have created any resource, you cannot scale up and scale down. Even you can have an automation. You can define the condition when you want to scale up or scale down the resources. Next one that you have is a data consolidation. So in this case, you can consolidate the data for better understanding like how exactly data is going to be considered, how data is going to be managed, each and everything is going to be available in this case. Now, who is a data engineer? 
So data engineer basically is the one who develops, who construct, who test and maintain the complete architecture of your system. So each and everything end to end is going to be created, developed and maintained by the data engineer. Now, what are the skills that you require for data engineer? So you require the knowledge in uh, programming language. You require the knowledge in the database like SQL, Hadoop. You require knowledge in the machine learning, data architecture and the data warehousing. Now, what are different roles and responsibilities? These are some of the common roles and responsibilities wherein it's like, you know, you have to develop the test cases. You have to develop the architecture. So it's you are going to be one who is going to be involved in end to end. You are going to have more visibility and more. I would say if you are a person who really like to learn and play around with the technology, you are going to get a lot of benefit in this case. You are you will be able to have end to end learning experience in this case. If you talk about salary trend uh, in US generally uh, salary trend is 90, 92 thousand to 98 dollars per annum. And in India, it's somewhere around 8.5 lakh rupees per annum. That's an average salary of your, you know, if you are going to plan to make a career. Now, if you're planning to take a course from Eureka, this is, you know, our structure. So we basically start with uh, Azure, where we talk about the basics of Azure, what exactly is Azure, some of the basic things about it. And then we do the practical hands on on this. Then we, after that, in the next class, we talk about what, what is Azure virtual machine and networking practical hands on. Then we talked about Azure VMSs, availability zones, and the hands on. Then we talked about different Azure app services like web application, logic app, all those kind of things, and the hands on. Then we talked about Azure hybrid connectivity and site recovery, how you can even, uh, you know, have that resiliency, what are different type of uh, resiliencies you can have, each and everything in detail, the hands on. In the next class, we talk about Azure storage solution design pattern, different type of storage that you have in the case of Azure, which has four type, you know, blob, file, queue, table and the hands on then we talked about azure kubernetes service the docker the kubernetes service microservices with the practical hands on in it then we talked about azure active directory and role based access control what is uh, how you can basically synchronize your on premise active directory with the azure one the practical hands on then we talked about azure monitoring services how you can monitor your azure uh, environment and the hands on and the last one we talked about the azure design migration wherein you want to migrate your data from on premise to cloud how you can and at the end, you're going to have a cape like this, like a superhero. So you're going to become an architect. Okay, now guys, let's talk about Azure Data Engineer. So what exactly is your uh, data engineer is going to do? So Azure uh, Data Engineer is responsible to design and implement the security, monitoring, privacy of data using the full stack of Azure Data Services to uh, satisfy the business need. So what are the skills that you require for data engineer? So you should have a good knowledge in um, you know on-premise uh, solutions and the cloud solutions. You should basically have end-to-end -end knowledge about like your different components of cloud, like what is platform as service, infrastructure as a service, you know. So all this kind of thing, the difference between them. So all that kind of knowledge you require in detail. Now, uh, basically, what is the certification needed uh, for a job if you need a job in Azure Data Engineering? So uh, the certification path basically involves two different exams. So one is DP200 and DP201. You can get those certification exams. We help you in preparing you for that. And you are going to get a certificate as a Azure Data Engineer Associate Certificate wherein you can get the jobs very easily. Now, if you talk about different roles and responsibilities of your Azure Data Engineer, these are some of the glimpses of it. Wherein you are going to be, you know, you are going to be a person who is going to be responsible to design the architecture, design the flaws, design uh, the solution and working on those standards. So basically you are going to be one who is going to understand the requirement, design something and uh, you know, uh, build a solution, implement it and then maintain it at the end. So as your data uh, engineer salary is a little bit higher. Uh, in the case of uh, US, if you talk about it's $150,000 per year, which is a good thing. And in the case of India, it's somewhere around 7.5 lakh rupees per annum. And this is learning path for the Azure. So if you're going to take a course from us, we start with Azure storage services. What are different Azure storage services that you have different types? What is Azure database services? Azure also provides you the, you know, uh, database services like, you know, without having any kind of a platform, which is directly database service. I want to build SQL. I don't want have to install a VM, create a VM, configure it. I can see uh, simply spin up a resource and I can get access of it. The different tools, what is Microsoft BA stack and the uh, different programming skills all this kind of things you are going to learn now i will talk uh, you know talk about a little bit about each and every component in the case of azure storage services like i said there are four types the blob queue file table we talk about each and everything in detail what is the use case of it what are the pros and cons at what at which scenario you have to use this so all uh, each and everything we are going to talk about this in detail in the course next one is azure database service 
So it basically provides you database as a service for SQL DB, document DB as a service. So in this case, like I said, there is no need to uh, deploy any kind of platform. There is no need to deploy the virtual machine, everything. You can just simply deploy a resource, just uh, on premise resource, and you can directly uh, going to be charged for the database only. You're not going to be charged for the virtual machine. So which is again a good cost effective solution. Now, if you talk about the tools, uh, various tools like Tableau, Power BI, Alternates, these are the various tools that we basically help you to understand and how you can integrate. And then you have a Microsoft uh, BI stack, the VS stack basically like, you know, SS, uh, the SQL servers, SSRS, we basically dive in more detail and the programming service, uh, you know, scales, which you require the Python and R. So we basically help you on that. I hope that you have really enjoyed the session. You have really learned a lot. Thank you. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.